Come in, if you dare. Welcome to a world of the fantastic and the macabre. Welcome to Ghost Stories YYC. Prepare yourself for a tale of terror. Written by Matthew Martell. With art by Matthew Martell. The Big Die-Up. In the frigid winter of 1886, the cattle went extinct, and so did the cowboy. Drought, paired with inadequate feed stores, were followed by a bottomless winter freeze. At the culmination of the calamity, the snow thawed and revealed the wrath of God, millions of rotting cattle. Rivers were clogged by their carcasses, their dried-up waterbeds buzzing with well-fed flies. What head remained were walking skeletons, emaciated and worthless. They soon earned the same fate as their kin, death, but now at the hands of the ranchers that worked them. Nothing was left after years of prosperity and little worry. Nature's execution was swift. The cowboys' livelihoods were left swinging at the end of a gallows knot. In the summer of 1887, some ways east of Cheyenne, in the blistering and dusty ranges of Wyoming, the man and the kids stopped their horses next to a desiccated brook. The sun was a hot, fiery orange ball embracing the horizon, stretching the shadows of skeletal trees long across the burned earth they clung to. I reckon here's as good a place to stop as any, said the man. He swung from his animal and began rolling a cigarette. See the horses are shaded up, kid. I'll get us a fire lit. There was nothing left for them on the open range after the big die-up. The ranch that employed them perished along with the cattle. So they were moving back east. The man to his wife and four small children. The kid to wherever he could wrangle a hot meal and a bed. The scorching day gave way to a cool night and a dome of bright stars that stretched the circumference of the lonely plains. The kid sat on his haunches, teasing the fire with a stick. The man lit a cigarette on a hot ember and took a long drag. Sadness sat with them like some unseen third companion. Too bad you weren't with us long enough to learn the trade, the man said, breaking the silence. Why'd you come out here? I wanted to see it all. Wanted to see the West. Wanted to make something of myself. Take on a real working man's wage. The man huffed. You never saw it, kid. Not really. Not like I did, working my way up from Gunsel to Roundup Boss. Back in 68, when I came to that ranch, it was small. 200 acres grew to almost 18,000. 200 head turned into God knows how many steers. More than we ever needed. We did all the work for the lords and ladies back at their comforts in the east, barely ever visiting the places they laid claim to. They didn't know the first thing about ranching, but they called themselves ranch owners. Them, they'll survive this. Go on to be the owners of something else. But us cowboys... We'll die out like the cattle we ran, ground up and turned to dust under our boot heels. That's greed's great reward. In the distance, a coyote barked, answered by a choir of yips and howls. I don't want to go back to the city, said the kid. Me neither, but our time here is done. He flicked the end of his cigarette into the fire. This land... She don't want us no more. He stood and dusted off his jeans, walking to his bedroll. Get some sleep. We have a long ways to Cheyenne. The man rested his head on his saddle, tipping his Stetson over weary eyes. The kid stayed up for a time, staring at the fire and imagining an ocean of cattle roaming the land so vast he could barely see the grass beneath their hooves. Hard to picture considering what surrounded them now. The fire cackled like some witch laughing at their plight, shooting sparks into the night sky. 
It wasn't long before sleep pulled at the kid's eyes and sent him to bed. The kid dreamt of a great mechanical beast, steam-filled and angry, shaking him violently. He lay back in that alley in Chicago, transported there, drenched and cold, unable to find respite from the steam engines and ceaseless vibrations of progress. That was before he moved west, seeking a better life than the city gave him. He woke with a start, back in Wyoming, shaken from his sleep by a rumble. His eyes adjusted to the dark, and the first hoof fell directly in front of his face. It was a herd of cattle, stretching far out into the moonlit open plain. Terror gripped him by the collar. The animal's leg was raw, bone showing through, tendons shifting and flexing. He looked up and the steer's clouded eyes locked to his own like some conjured demon. Most of its skin was eaten away, its monstrous jaw filled with rotted and broken teeth. A maggot-ridden tongue hung swinging beneath a gaping hole below its mouth. It moved past, kicking up dust, dragging a tangle of innards. More cattle followed. Hundreds. Thousands. None of them whole. Every monster was falling apart, defying death. The beast marched westward, stepping over and around the kid. With shaking nerves, he strained his neck to look to where the man slept. He was there, motionless, seemingly unaware of the ghostly herd that walked around them. Lowering his head on his saddle, staring straight upwards, the kid was paralyzed with fear. Time passed and the herd thinned. The stars slowly faded out, and the black night sky became bright cloudless blue until they marched no more. Morning doves cooed while cicadas sang their songs. Stiffly, slowly, the kid came up on his elbows. He scanned the ground about him and could see no sign of the ghostly herd. He must have dreamt it. Standing up on aching legs to get a better look at his surroundings, he couldn't make out anything. Not a broken branch, a hoof mark, nor cow pie was to be seen. And no sign of his traveling companion either, save for his trampled, sun-bleached Stetson. The kid saddled his horse as fast as he could and galloped away. Some hundred meters down the dried-out riverbed he found the man. There he lay, his body pulped, limbs sitting at awkward angles, his clothes torn and tattered. Beside his ravaged corpse, a cracked and sun-blasted cow skull rested, grinning up at the kid.